Hey guys, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be making this really cool procedural satisfying animation. So let's just jump straight into it. So I'm going to clear my scene here and we're just going to go into geometry nodes. So if you're in layout, just jump into geometry nodes and I'm just going to create a mesh plane just like that. And let's jump in and just create a new geometry nodes here. I'm just going to call this tutorial. All right. So now that we're in here, let's get started. So let's go shift A. We're going to add in a icosphere. I'm just going to unplug the group input. Let's use an icosphere and we're going to be instancing a bunch of cubes all along this surface here. So currently it's not very subdivided. So let's just increase this to about three subdivs. Awesome. Now let's go. So shift A, search for mesh to points. And let's just add that in here. Awesome. And I'm also going to add in a subdivide mesh node in between here just to get a lot more points to play with. So let's just increase that to like two for now. All right, moving on from here, let's go shift A and let's search for instance on points. Let's plug that in and let's just add in a cube. So shift A mesh primitives cube. Let's drop that in on the instance and let's just bring down that size to something a little bit more reasonable. Let's go 0.01. If you want to edit everything at once, you can just left click and drag down and then enter in a number like that. So let's just start off with 0.04 and now I'm just going to increase my subdivision level to something like four. Um, so it's going to be very heavy. So your computer might start screaming here. So if it is, you can just drop this back down and work with it until you're happy and then bring it back up. I'm just going to bring mine up to four. So continuing on from here, we're basically done with the actual with creating the mesh. Um, now we want to actually create that cool noise animation. So it's actually in the name. So we have to use some noise textures. So go shift a texture noise, drop that down. I'm just going to also grab a color ramp. So shift a set for color ramp, plug that in here. Um, I'm just going to plug the factor into the factor and then the color into the scale. Awesome. So now if we start playing with this, you can kind of see what's happening. So what I want to do is actually bring these two values in pretty close, but currently it's absolute. So black is completely nothing, which are all the gaps and white is the opposite. So white creates the geometry or leaves the geometry available for us to see. So what I want to do is just change these slightly so that we actually have a sort of fall off between the two. So I'll make that sort of an off white and I'll bring this up to a little bit of a gray and it might be hard to see with YouTube compression, but you'll see there's all these little points here, which makes for a really cool effect. So now that we have that, Let's just play with the noise texture a bit. So first off, let's just change it to 4D. So 4D is going to actually allow us to animate this procedurally and make it all looping and whatnot. So let's just go with the W scale. And while I do this, you can see what's going on. It's making these cool globular effects. Um, but we actually want to play with the scale because right now it doesn't look too satisfying to me. So I'm just going to bring this down to two for the scale. Not bad. And now if we play with the W, you'll see it's so making this really cool sort of growing effect, sort of like liquid. So I'm going to change that back to zero. And I'm actually just going to add in a UV sphere. I'm just going to shade that smooth. So now if we go to our geometry nodes here, you can kind of see it's almost like there's a landmass sort of growing around this orb that we've created in the center. So that's kind of the effect we're going for. So that's basically everything done, but to actually make this whole thing loop as an animation and, and render it out as an animation, we need to, first of all, make some keyframes. So let's open up the timeline here and I'm just gonna to go to frame zero. And what we're going to do is mix between two noise textures. So we're going to duplicate this noise texture and I'm just going to grab a mix RGB node and basically, I'm just going to plug in the factor to color one for the top one and factor into color two for the bottom one. So both of these noise textures share the same information currently, and we're basically going to animate them across the timeline so that when one of them finishes their cycle, the other one starts where it ends. And lastly, I'm just going to plug the mix color into the factor of this color ramp. So now, Basically, we're going to animate this factor from zero to one. So when it's on zero, it's using this noise texture. And when it's on one, it's using this noise texture. So let's bring this down to zero and we're on frame zero. So let's just hover over this and press I to add in a keyframe. And I'm going to go to frame 150 and change this to one and then hit I again to add another keyframe in. 
And it's also important to make sure that this is a linear transition. So I'm just going to press A to select all the keyframes here. Then I'll press T to change the interpolation and just change this to linear. Awesome. So now, lastly, we need to animate the noise textures. So back on frame zero, I'm just going to change the W from zero. So it'll be zero here. And then at 150, I'll change it to two. So I'm going to press I. So it's at zero. Go to frame 150, change this to one, hit I. So now we need to animate the second noise texture. And we basically just want to do the reverse of the top noise texture. So at frame 150, this is going to be zero. So hit I. And then we're going to go back to frame zero. And instead of having it at positive one, we're going to change this to negative one and hit a keyframe there. And again, we need to make sure that all of the keyframes are linear. So let's go A to select everything, T to get the interpolation, and then change this to linear. Also for this noise texture, I'll just select this and double check. So A to select everything, T, hit linear, and we're good to go. So now I'll just hit play. And you'll see we have this really cool sort of growing animation, kind of like landmass on the surface of the earth. And once we hit frame 150, you'll see it's actually looped and there's no sort of sudden janky movements, which is a really cool effect. All right, so now let's actually make a scene for this guy. Let's go shift A, let's add in a plane here. I'm just gonna bring this below, just like that. I'll also scale this up to like eight. So I'm just gonna jump into edit mode now and just create an endless backdrop. So I'm extruding with E and then pushing it up on the Z axis. And now I'm just gonna bevel this and give it a couple loop guts there. Now I'm going to shade smooth and now we can just quickly make some lighting um, and make sure this scene looks good. So I'm going to go into rendered mode. I'm just going to add in a light here. So shift a light area. I'm just going to bring that up above the object we've got here. And let's just increase the power to something like 100. All right, there we go. I'm just going to scale this up a bit. And now I'm just going to add in a camera as well. I'm just going to jump into viewport shading quickly to not lag my computer out. Let's go shift a camera. I'm just going to line this up with my viewport here and press Control alt 0 to snap the camera to my view. There we go. And I'm just going to quickly change the focal length of this to something like 125. Get a really nice zoomed in shot. And then I'll just sort of frame it up a little bit here. Awesome. All right, so now let's actually finish the lighting. So I'll just drop this down and use scene lights and scene world. Sort of get an understanding of what it's looking like light wise. So let's just shift D this to duplicate it. I'm going to rotate this on the Y axis and I'll just move it over here a little bit. There we go. And I'll just create one more, so Shift D. And just bring this around. I'm just pressing Shift and T to aim this with my cursor. There we go. And now let's just jump into cycles and see how the lighting is looking. Awesome, so that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now let's just start making some materials and we'll finish this one off. So back into material preview. I'm just going to change this back to the look dev here and let's just start adding a material. So I'm just still in geometry node. So I'll just pull over another window here for the shader editor. Let's go shader editor. And for the actual geometry nodes material, it's a pretty simple one. We're just going to click new and let's just start making this material. So I'm just going to change the base color. And to actually see this um, working for you, you do need to set the material in geometry nodes. So let's just go shift A in geometry nodes and let's just search for set material. Let's plug that in after the instance on points. Um, now we can just click here on this little drop down and choose our material. So it might be a good thing to name this. So let's just call this, I'm just gonna call this toot material and let's find that one, toot material. So now I'm just gonna jump back into cycles to actually see what I'm doing. Awesome. So for the base color, I'm going to use a predetermined hex value. This is the hex code. It's 9AC2FF, basically a very light blue. And from here, I'm just going to bring the roughness all the way down. And that's basically everything I've done for the instances. Um, you can also give it a clear coat if you like, just to make it look a little bit more glossy. So let's increase this to one. There we go. And now let's actually just do the orb material, which is actually really easy. So. Select your sphere that you created. Let's create a new material here. I'm just gonna call this Orb Tutorial. And for this, I basically just used a few simple nodes that gives a really cool effect. So Shift A, let's search for the Hue Splash Saturation node. And I'm just gonna plug that into the base color. And then for the actual hue, 
we're going to use this node called layer weight. So shift A, search for layer weight, and we're going to use the facing and plug that into the hue. Now basically you can't see anything yet, but once we change the color, you'll see immediately what's happening. So I'm just going with this basic green and you can kind of tell it's making this really cool sort of gradient effect outwards, sort of like a rainbow gobstopper or like layers of the earth, um, which is really cool. So final step here, we can, you can also give it some clear coat if you want. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, but lastly, we just need to give the background some color as well. And I found that actually just using the same material as the instances looks pretty good. So I'm just going to duplicate that. So click on your background here. Let's just search up our material, plug that in, and you'll notice it straight away it's got a lot of reflections. So to fix that, you can actually just create an instance of it. So if you click this little button here, it'll make it entirely new material. And this one will be separate to the one that we've put on the instance. And now we can just increase the roughness and take off the clear coat and it'll give it a nicer sort of feel, sort of like a matte on the background there. Awesome. So now if we just hit play, you can see we have this really cool scene animating out in front of us. And now all we need to do is render this out. So let's just jump into our render properties tab here. You can render this out in Eevee if you'd like, but I'm going to be using cycles. So if you are using cycles, just use GPU compute if you can. For the render, I'm going to use noise threshold. Yes, max samples. I'm just going to set to 150. Denoise, I'm just going to uncheck that and scroll down here to motion blur. I'm going to make sure that's enabled. And then color management, just click on this one and make your look high contrast. So if it was on none, just change that to high contrast. It'll give it a really nice pop in the final render. Now for render settings, just come through here to the output properties, click on that. Make sure you've got the right resolution. I'm doing 1920 by 1080. The frame range should be set to your scene frames here, so you shouldn't need to worry about that. Now for the output, just create a folder to put all of your images into anywhere on your computer. And then for the file format, PNG is fine, but if you do want to have Blender compile an actual mp4 for you. Um, you can change this to ffmpeg and then just change the container to mpeg4 video. H.264 is fine. Output quality, make that perceptually lossless and the rest is all good to go. So now we can just come up here to render, render animation. Alrighty guys, so there is the final animation. Super quick and easy. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.